It is my pleasure to share with you uh, the topic as it is laid out. After all these um, practical tools and widgets that uh, Chin has mentioned uh, provided by Google, I hope through the next 20 minutes I will be able to share with you some of the uh, macro views in terms of how SMEs will be facing these challenges and trying to grab these opportunities as well as how all these different governments, especially from APEC, will be able to help these SMEs. So uh, my outline is as follows. First of all, looking at the global trends, and then look at the uh, uh, implications for SMEs. Then finally, share with you how the Taiwan government, especially uh, the SMEA, is trying to tackle and also uh, help SMEs. So very first that we understand that all these uh, uh, wars out there are not buzzwords. They are actually here in particular that many of these, uh, uh, besides the AIs, uh, the IoT, O2O, there are some aspects of it. We have not yet grasped uh, the logistic, uh, the essence of the uh, insights. So, but a few things for SMEs to be aware of, for example, on the uh, top left corner, we talk about adjacencies in the sense that everything we do do not jump into 100% uh, new things, but better to look at what are our core competencies and extend from there. Very much like the ones at the bottom, asset efficiencies, especially in the traditional SMEs, many of those are in either manufacturing industry or in service industry. They need to look at what they do best, and they need to leverage on them and make use of the new tools and also the uh, gadgets from the digital economy to make use of it. So with that, uh, I would like to uh, share with you uh, in summarizing some of the, the paradigm shifts um, from uh, digital economy. So Chin has talked about that uh, it's no longer, sorry about this, it's no longer talking about products. We need to do what our customers are asking for it. And therefore, some of the service-based applications, uh, along with the cybersecurity, and it's no longer about a product, but about a total solution. So software, hardware integration. We need to be servicing our customers. So later on, I will talk about uh, what this means by user-centric. So for many years in the past, Taiwan has used this uh, smile curve to talk about, for example, in manufacturing sector. However, with this digital economy, it's no longer good enough if you just offer products and services in your own brand. We are talking about you need to build this ecosystem around this uh, user-centric uh, area, meaning that if you control the supply chain, not good enough. If you have a system integration, not good enough. We are in the era of big data. You need to know your customers well. You need to analyze your data. And hence, many of the companies uh, claim to fan in each of the area. And granted, some of those are overlapping. But let me just want to uh, point to you. The people that are at the apex of controlling this user-centric ecosystem are making the biggest money out of it. So if we take a look at the examples comparing in Taiwan, for example, uh, we are still at the um, bottom of the uh, smiling curve, even though some companies, especially in the semiconductor, are very well done uh, in terms of the value add section about MediaTek, about TSMC. But what is the main difference between us and all these uh, global players is the size of the bubbles. The size is the market cap, meaning the investors' appreciation for these uh, companies. And clearly, the bigger ones are getting bigger. And here, for the Taiwanese company listed on the smiling curve, we are not even talking about SMEs. And therefore, it is especially daunting for SMEs to look at all these increasing uh, big players in the digital economy, and we need to ask the question, where can we place our investment, and where can we leverage all the core competencies that we have gathered from the past? And one 
equally uh, uh, prevalent uh, thinking people talk about is this business model. And obviously, the, the uh, users and also the service providers and the financial stakeholders, Chin talk about the advertising uh, players. And clearly, that this is not the traditional way that SMEs think about. And, and therefore, uh, for example, that we talk about uh, Uber, and clearly Uber does not think of it as, as a taxi company, but we are using taxi company to compete with Uber. That is totally wrong about this ecosystem competition. So with those challenges, let's fall back and look at SMEs a little bit. So for this new digital economy, there are six pillars uh, from the top infrastructure about wireless, service model as we just talked about, digital talents, regulations, ecosystems, and lastly, the digital rights. All these are very new to traditional SMEs. Of course, many of the companies, especially startups, uh, within the Computex uh, exhibition area, they are sort of this micro uh, enterprise, uh, which may not face all these issues, but these challenges are particularly daunting for traditional SMEs who may have roughly 100 to 200 employees. So uh, let's summarize some of the uh, revolution thinking that SMEs need to go through when thinking about this digital economy. Very first of all, the market is changing very rapidly. What's your competitor today may not be your competitor in the future. The second thing is that the digital economy, for example, data analytics is the soul of the whole business rather than just a tool. The third thing is that we are talking about ecosystem establishment and growing the ecosystem instead of talking just about value chain, supply chain. And very lastly, the enterprises are the dancers on the S-curve of the industry, meaning that Things are changing very fast. What will be the leaders? Uh, what are the leaders today? May not be the leaders in the future, and those are very challenging. And taking the, uh, this page and examples that uh, I just mentioned, Uber, right? Uh, on the uh, maybe uh, about a month ago, I was talking. I was hearing two Taiwanese people talking about this uh, new services. This new company has. They say you company because they don't know how to pronounce Uber. <laughs> so I overheard this competition. They were talking about Uber, the you company, delivering takeout services in Taiwan. And that is very new. Uh, I will not uh, bore you with reading out all these texts, but looking at customers, policy, focus, and also the execution. We need to think about in terms of supporting systems. The customers are no longer the traditional owners of the SMEs. In fact, many of them are sort of these micro entrepreneurs or the innovators or even the stakeholders in the ecosystem. And the market dynamics are changing fast. And we are talking about everything service-based, even though you are making products, physical products. Then traditionally, we talk about incubators, accelerators, Again, uh, every company or every entrepreneur is unique, and therefore, all the customized environment need to be thought very careful before uh, all the government in trying to lend out the support. And at the end, we need to optimize the environment for them, and we need to think about how to help them export uh, to overseas markets, because many countries uh, in APEC, APEC is actually uh, a small in domestic market. So um, finally, I want to share with you some of the direction that the uh, Taiwan government, especially SMEA, and also across different uh, ministries that we are trying to do in terms of helping SME coping with these challenges and also try to grab these opportunities. As you know it, Taiwan has a lot of um, uh, uh, industry clusters all within one and a half hours of uh, high-speed rail transportation. And that is very unique for a population of 23 million. And many of those are SMEs. So when you take a look at the stats of the SME uh, in Taiwan, 
uh, one can uh, really spot out that uh, even though SMEs only account for 30% of the revenues, 15% of the uh, export. However, in terms of local employment, that's a very high number of 78%. I'm sure many of your uh, countries uh, share these type of characteristics for SMEs. Now we have this digital economy, so all of a sudden, we need to talk about production, not for a mass, but for a individual mass customization. And all these ecosystems are actually cross-disciplinary, as the Uber case indicates. It cuts across transportation, it cuts across services. And an example that each does in the smart transportation is that we have a lot of these local car accidents, uh, myself, involving in one, uh, in a sense that we have motorcycles uh, that sometimes run over uh, different uh, street lights. So this is an example that we do at Sinju area. We look at four intersections with the highest accident rates, and we use uh, uh, LiDAR, we use radar, we use a uh, uh, mobile app. So the moment that you try to cross the street from uh, waiting at red light and turning green, uh, if some uh, motorcycle or fast cars approaching the, the intersection from your right and left uh, without being able to stop seemingly, and we will get some traffic sign alert, we will get an alert from our app. And this is something that we are doing uh, locally with a unique environment. So the very last thing I want to mention is that we all know the uh, coming of the digital economy. But uh, for some of you that might be checking the uh, basketball game tomorrow between these Golden State Warriors and also the Cleveland Cavaliers, I just want to divert your attention to golf. There are two premier events in golf. One is President's Cup featuring U.S. team and international team. The other one is Ryder Cup featuring Team USA and Team Euro in Europe. I want to use this slide to say to you, not many of us here have the uh, uh, market size and also the uh, people uh, that can feature a U.S. team alone. But we can be an important player, especially with SME, that need to be a key players of the global ecosystem. And that's uh, uh, a message that I want to, to remember at the end of my presentation. So um, very lastly, through the days that you have in Taiwan, take a look at some of the uh, uh, cities features uh, within Taiwan, the 101 and also uh, different ones. And I, I urge you uh, to connect with the people from Taiwan and to work together as a whole. And only together, our SMEs will be able to conquer the challenges and grab the opportunities of tomorrow. Thank you.